I am reading today from the Gospel of Matthews, chapter 13, verses 24 through 30. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat, and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, an enemy has done this. The slave said to him, then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, no, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. I'd like to use as a sermonic theme this morning, weeds and seeds together. Weeds and seeds together. Over a decade ago, a friend of mine that lives, uh, has a getaway house up in Wisconsin invited me, her family invited me to her home. It was a little bit of a drive, but with some good music, I was able to make my way through a couple of cities and a couple of rural areas and a couple of toll roads to finally get to a stretch of land where it turned from road to gravel to just hard packed land. After a narrow path of up and down and up and down, I finally arrived at her home with a beautiful pond, her house, animals, a barn, a couple of cows, and other animals in the yard. Any place in a rural area for a period of time works for me, and I suddenly felt myself relaxing and kind of vibing with just the space and the energy of country living. In the country, everybody works. Nobody gets a pass. And so after I had come into the home and sat for a while and talked, I was sent off to gather flowers for the evening dinner. So to go outside, walk up a ways back behind the house and pull out a few flowers for a floral arrangement to sit on the table. I left the home and walked out and was amazed by this orchestra of just beautiful colored flowers of all kinds of colors. I picked a few of this color, I picked a few of that color, and after I had picked about five different colors, I felt rather pleased with myself. And I proceeded back to the house to hand the host the flowers I had picked it so she could arrange them in whatever way she saw fit. It was in that moment that she said, Charlene, you've picked a lot of weed. I didn't know. I was from the urban area and weed looked a certain way. In the yard, it didn't look like weed, but I was informed by her that some of what I picked was weed and some of what I picked was flowers. But honestly, I was like, without her eyes, without her skill, who could tell the difference? What I was astounded with in that moment and even as I reflect back upon that moment is how beautiful the weeds and the seeds all look together. I was amazed and did not actually know that one was weed and one was flower. Today we enter the biblical text and we're talking about weed. It appears that a farmer had planted some good seed and then another person comes along at night and plants weed. This is a story about seeds and weeds. The seed come into life wanted. The seed is intentionally planted. The seed has expectation that with the right tilling and tending and feeding and watering, the seed will produce wheat. These seeds have purpose, they have a goal, they have an aim. 
Seeds are good and productive and they feed and they nourish and they sustain life. And yet this talk of weed carries a different tone. By the very fact that we refer to the seed as good, it implies something about the weed. The weed is like a bastard wheat, resembling wheat, but the grains are black. It resembles wheat, and that is why it is hard to detect until it is growing and intertwined. I stopped by this morning to talk about the weeds and the seeds. Years ago in my own garden, when my son was about three years old, I was pulling weed because I was fully buying in to the stereotype about weeds. I was freeing the seeds in my garden to grow. My son wanting to help because at that age, kids want to help you. Later, it's a different story, but at three years old, they want to help. They have total positive energy. And so he asked if he could help me pull the weed. Well, I could use all the help I could get pulling weed. So I said, son, go for it. And so I went and continued to pull weed and after a few minutes, I turned around in horror to find out that my son was not pulling weed, but he was pulling plant. I say all this to say that it's hard sometimes to discern the difference between a weed and a seed. Maybe the skillful gardener, but maybe many others of us have mistaken at points in times a difference between weed and seed. Here's the question that I want to lay at your foot today. If God made the seed, then who made the weed? If God made the seed, then who made the weed? We often say, and we just walked through Genesis a couple of months ago, that God's blueprint is on every living organism. So if God made the seed, then who made the weed? And if all things are made by God and everything that was made by God has purpose, then maybe the weed is getting a bad rap. In the text today, the weed has already been judged. The farmer assistant wants to do something about the weed. And it isn't loving, it isn't kind, it isn't merciful. The weed is perceived as a threat to the livelihood of the seed just this week. One of our members posted on social media this large, tall dandelion. One of the tallest I had ever seen. It looked like it was at least about four feet tall. It grabbed her attention and so when she posted it, it grabbed my attention as well. And her focus was left and said that if this weed is left to its own devices, it will grow just like things in our life. Again, implying that somehow the weed has to be taken out. The weed cannot be left to its own devices. The weed cannot be allowed to go. If God made the seed, then who made the weed? You see, already in this text, we have ascribed a negative value to weed. We have labeled the plant as not worthy. We have gone as far as to say its intent is evil. And so intrinsic in the teaching that the worker comes to his boss and inquires, what are we going to do about the weed? You want to make this weed get out. Do you want to end its life? Do you want to send the military in? Do you want to send the law enforcers in? What do you want me to do about this weed? Today, the text we are reading is a parable. Parables do not tell us everything. It takes something familiar to point to something sort of unfamiliar. Parables are open to some and to others. The door of understanding is closed, according to the writer of Matthew. It's almost like a special entrance door is given to some to perceive deeply what the text is saying. Some interpret this text to have two complex meanings, while others says it's more complicated than that. It's more complex than that. It's subversive. It's intended to subvert or disrupt the established system or institution. The farmer says to his worker, let the seed and the weed grow together. That's good news, just in case you didn't know it. The weed and the seed can grow together. Catch that out. 
What amazes me about we is, if I can totally be honest, that without care, without love, without tending, without water, without cultivation, without any attention at all, the weed still grows. Maybe the weed can teach us something about thriving in adverse situations. Just maybe the weed has something to say about its making. But in our world, the weed has gotten a bad rep. You might leave here today and be bold and say, I'm a weed. I'd advise you not to call somebody else a weed unless they've listened to the sermon. But you might want to experiment a little and leave the church today and say, I think I might be a weed. I'm a little unruly. I'm a little unkempt. I grow wild at times. In our global world today, clearly there are seeds and there are weeds. If I told you to take out a piece of paper and write down what you thought a seed was and what you thought a weed was, probably we would overlap in some of our answers. You see, everybody wants to be a seed because the seed is a glorious position, but nobody wants to be a weed where one's existence is not wanted. We have a way of making some people feel in our country and in our world that they are unwanted. Listen to these phrases and tell me if you can hear the weed speaking to you. Fat, four eyes, criminal, looters, urban, minority, poor, lazy, immigrant, Irish, Muslim, damaged goods, angry, thug, stupid, violent, bossy, those people, untouchables, make America great again, homosexual, gay, two-parent family, lively, uncouth, Loud, wow, these are our weeds. Lucilla Clifton, a poet says, every day something has tried to kill me and has failed. Weeds don't die easily, they just keep coming back. But why are we trying to kill the weeds? Why do we treat certain people one way in our country and another group differently? Could it be we've been taught to see some people as weeds and to see other people as seeds? The real thing is until someone pointed it out in my friend's backyard, I saw the beauty of both. I didn't distinguish between names and labels. They were beautiful on her table, but then one had to be called weeds and one had to be called seeds. The text says today, let them grow together. Last year, I went to two conferences with total strangers. And I'm gonna ask uh, Wei Jin to put this picture up. One of them was at the Wild Goose Conference. This is like the conference, it's just interesting. Anyway, there were definitely some weeds at this conference and there were definitely some seeds at this conference, if you get what I mean. And anyway, I'm not sure I knew all of what I was getting myself into, but this is an outdoor conference that takes place in Hot Springs, North Carolina. I'm feeling hotter now, but this takes place in Hot Springs. And actually, if we didn't have COVID last week, we would have been at the Wild Goose Festival. Anyway, you meet outdoors and I had taken a tent, it had just rained for hours because one of the things I didn't know was that high up in the mountains, it rains a lot. And so it had rained for hours, there were mud puddles everywhere and here we are on a little bit of ground that's not totally damp that we're trying to put our tent up on. And after about 15 minutes, we haven't made much progress. But then some strangers reach in to help us out. Let me say at this conference, I knew almost absolutely nobody. I showed up with a bunch of weeds and strangers and seeds and something amazing happened. That after spending about four or five days together, people stopped being strangers 
and they stopped being seeds and they stopped being weeds and we came to know one another and we came to tell jokes with one another and we came to break bread to one another and we came to share our stories with one another and hug one another and be kind to one another and pray for one another. Something happened in that context and I see it often happening when you put people together after a while the titles of weeds and seeds gets less and less. Strangers helping us, us helping strangers, folks giving each other the high five, folks eating together, folks sweating together. <laughs> Much better than me sweating by myself up here today. <laughs> and then towards the end there was a sadness because the weeds and the seeds became intertwined. And community was developed, much like here at United Church of Hyde Park and other places when we allow ourselves to deviate away from the titles. And by the time it was time to leave, we were feeling sad, but we're feeling excited because we're like, we'll see you next year. Relationships have been formed and even a couple of people I've kept in contact with on Facebook And on the video today, you have a picture of what happens when seeds and weeds grow together. But who is the weed and who is the seed? Again, I've witnessed this over and over again. People put together who tear down walls instead of building them up. When we open ourselves up to others, this is what happens. When we peel back labels to get to know people and their stories and their journeys, and we see their humanity, this is what happened. Seeds and weeds getting along and building community together. Seeds and weeds together. Amen. <laughs>